layers of the earth. All right, so some of this should be a review for our students, I think. I think a lot of you guys have Agreed. done layers of the earth. But um, some information here first about how earth was formed. Um, so earth was formed about 4.5 billion years ago. I was That's there. a long time now, ago. Now, there's a lot. At that point, there was a lot of uh, matter from exploding stars just circulating Swirling and flying, and around. flying around. You're talking about like after the Big Bang, like there's a bunch yep. of stuff everywhere. Right. Hot, cool. molten and, stuff you know, matter our, flying through space. Our star existed at this point. True. But we're talking matter from other stars okay. and just other galaxies, galaxies. and all over the place. Yep. Yeah. So stuff's flying around. It starts colliding with each other. And this not only gathers all this rock together, but it creates heat. And those that and rock started to melt a little bit. Yeah. And when you have semi-liquid rock that mm -hmm. you know somewhat melted the denser rock tends to sink towards the bottom Ooh, this yeah. is why we're, st we're that's why we're going to notice here we're going to notice different materials in different layers of the earth yep. this is why okay. Yep. okay so to really quickly recap what this says as earth continued to be formed by different rocks and all that um the denser stuff metals and whatnot sank towards the bottom okay and um yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. So the denser stuff goes to the bottom, which in this case would be the center of our planet, and the less dense stuff bubbled up to the surface, and then as it cooled, it kind of made more or less right. the, the structure that we are currently on here, and this happened billions and billions of times yep. all over the entire universe. So now we uh, characterize Earth as having three main layers, although we will break, break these, these down even farther. Down. Yeah. Right. But you have the crust, which is the outside, outside. kind of like the crust of bread, mm -hmm. yep. the mantle, and the and core. The core. Right, so take it away. So crust the boy. crust. The, <laughs> well, the crust is my favorite you place. Crusty. That's, That's my favorite place. Why? I keep all my stuff there. Good place. Without the crust, I'd have no place to keep my junk. So. But basically, the crust makes up the rocky outer surface of the Earth. This is the part you're most familiar with because that's what we live on. Okay. So when you walk around, that's what you're on. It's the coolest layer of Earth because it's the farthest out from the middle, and it's also exposed to the atmosphere. Okay. So it also experiences temperature swings, whereas the other layers tend to be pretty constant in their temperature. Uh, it's also the thinnest section, which is odd because that's we think we live on the bigger part. We live on the thinnest part. It's only yeah. about 5 to 10 kilometers thick, which is nothing. That's like from here to almond, basically. Yeah. You can't even think of it as having the proportions of the crust on bread. Right. Yeah, it's the yeah, crust it's is just a little thick. bitty yeah. thin part with how Very big small. a piece of bread it is. Yeah. And the thickest section is about 70 kilometers thick. And where do you think you're going to find the thick parts? Well, where's the thin parts? I want to know yeah. that. Let's go back. Like, oh, the thinnest part. I thought that was obvious. I, I don't know. I'm Probably. Not... I mean, the ocean goes really deep, right? You'd be correct. So, if yeah, it goes deep, ocean. it's closer yep. to the center of the earth. So, we're talking Bottom things that go ocean. down are getting closer to the center so of the earth. The... Okay. Yep. And then the, big, uh, the top part would be the... It's got to be mountains. Right? Mountains right? The are, highest right. part away from yeah, the center. Yeah, like, I think the Himalayas. Mm. In, True. Uh, Nepal and China and yep. all that. Yep. They're the Very true. They're the tallest. Yeah, it's going to be the thickest part. Okay. So that's the crust. So, you know, the mantle. Now, the mantle is the next part down. We had the crust. We're going to take a step inside there. And this mantle is about 2,900 kilometers thick, give or take. I uh, think that's about 1,800 miles. <laughs> it's about 1,800 miles. Mm -hmm. And it's composed mostly of the element iron. Uh, and again, that has to do with density and where, you know, we've got a very iron-rich center of our planet here. Uh, and we break up the middle of this, this, this layer, this mantle that we talk about, into an upper mantle and lower mantle. So obviously, upper mantle is closer to the crust. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a little cooler in temperature because it's so closer is, to the outside. Is it still solid or is it liquid? That uh, that's solid. Just solid like the crust, mantle. it's solid, but it's warmer than the mantle. Yeah. Okay. Or warmer I, and, than the crust. And, you know, there, there is permeating like magma and stuff like that. Oh, right? yeah. So, that's where we get volcanoes so, and stuff. There so, yeah, are things that come It's not through. like 100% solid, but it's True. like mostly solid. Yeah. Basically. When we say solid, everything is relative. Yeah. So, um, but the upper mantle is generally rocky. Uh, not quite as rocky as our crust is here, but it's definitely what we would call a solid. The lower mantle is the flowing part of the mantle. Uh, it's it's kind of like, if you think about this, it's semi-liquid, um, like nacho cheese or chocolate syrup. Mm, a sock um, Yeah, and it's so yeah. thick, even though it's not the hottest part of the Earth, it is the biggest volume-wise part of the Earth, so it gives a lot of heat. And this is where most of your geothermal or Earth temperature heat comes from. So when you see geysers and that, a lot of that heat is generated from this area. Cool. Cool. Um, so then you go a little further down, you get to the core. That's now the core is the middle, okay? Like an apple, apple core. Yep. Or if you're a weightlifter like me, you yeah. work out your yeah, you core, do your, your, awesome abs, core. your abs and your quads and stuff, mm, like the middle of your huge. body. It's very important if you're an athlete, by the way, to work out your core. Don't focus too much 
on your glamour muscles like your pecs and your biceps. That's what I really, do. You're not getting that much stronger unless you work your core. But anyway, um, <laughs> so the core is mostly iron and nickel because that is the densest stuff that's in our earth. And it's yep. up to the bottom a long, long time ago. So the outer core is liquid. Cool. Um, like now, is it liquid like the mantle stuff is, where it's kind of a kind goo, of or is it liquid? It's straight up liquid. It's okay. liquid, liquid. So we're just okay. pour, pour all over the place. Mouth, everything. Gotcha. And it's a uh, wow. twenty-three hundred kilometers thick, which is about um, one thousand four hundred thirty miles. That is, Think you are right. really uh, SMRT you smart. Get, you got yeah. this math down, man. So That's you good. go a little further down, and you get suddenly you hit a really solid layer called the inner core. Okay. Now the inner core is about seven hundred fifty miles across. Okay. And it is composed mm. of solid iron and nickel. That you seem seems like you're perplexed weird about something. to me. Well, let me see if I can illuminate a little bit. Let for me you. ask first. The hotter it gets, the more likely it is to melt. Right in my head, that makes sense. And you'd be right in most situations. Like if if everything was the same, all the pressure was the same, then the hotter you get, stuff is going to melt. But the thing you have to realize is we're at the center now, right? So the very middle. The very middle. Inner core. You have the outer core. You've got the inner, lower mantle, upper mantle, and, and then the you got the crust. So all that stuff is pushing down on top of it. So the pressure is increasing. And one of the things that's interesting... Packs those molecules together yep. then, huh? When you increase <gasps> oh, pressure... Oh, like back in a snowball! Kind of, yeah. You put a crazy amount of pressure on it? Like when Superman yep. makes a Starts diamond out freeze. of coal! Starts yeah. to freeze. So the more pressure you have, the harder it is to stay liquefied. So it's still very, very hot. It's probably it's hot true. enough it should probably be a liquid. Yep. But the pressure squishing it into like solid crystals and it's, it's actually a solid middle of the earth. So the... Yep. The inner core is solid. It is solid. Yeah. But really hot, the hottest. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. So that's, that's kind dangerous. of weird to think that it kind of gets to solid. But a little bit more we have to kind of get into with the crust and yeah, the mantle. Yeah, let's go back to the – are... This is like a different way of classifying right. the crust and mantle. mantle. But this is actually really important for Hugely the important. next video. For anything yeah. with plate tectonics dealing with this is because the crust and mantle divides into two of their own little categories. You have this thing called the lithosphere, and then you have the asthenosphere. Okay. And the lithosphere is the crust – like, you know, we stand on, and then the rigid upper portion of the mantle, so the solid and the solid together. And okay. what's neat about that is those things form like plates, basically, and what happens is they float on the next layer below, which is the asthenosphere, or, as so or asthenosphere, depending on how you want to pronounce floating it. Floating on the asthenosphere. Which is the so semi-liquid nacho cheese, and they kind of float along on this, like, lake, basically, of all of this goo. Molten rock and all and that iron. is how we get movement of plates, which we'll talk more about later. Yeah. Interesting. So here's a good picture of the asthenosphere. Oh, the orange part's the asthenosphere. I see yep. what you're yep. talking about. It's under the crust and under the upper mantle. Mm -hmm. Right. I get and it. And we say it exhibits plastic properties because, like in science, that word plastic actually means flexible. True. Oh. Uh, yep. And that's actually how plastic got its name is because you form plastic molds by, by, by pouring molds something and, yeah. and then it cools. So yep. we're talking yep. it's that kind of, wow, and interesting. The asthenosphere being flowing and flexible, as you said, is what drives all the processes that we're going to talk about in this unit. So it's extremely important that it works that way. That seems yeah. important. You're yeah. saying that this asthenosphere is what makes the rocky plates move. Right. And we'll that talk yeah. seems about like that. something All three important. Of us have said it at this point, it must mm. be important. So <laughs> maybe you should write it down. Yeah. Well, so wait. Uh, here's a. Yeah. <laughs> here's a bit blown up version of that picture we just had. Right. And I think that's it. Yep. All right. There so, we go. I'm out of here. Bye. Take Woo! your quiz.